Hello, my name is Jonathan Rivera. This is my artifact for Anthony's 3D model for task four. My artifact of choice was a weapon of warfare named the Makwaitil. I think that's how you pronounce it. Don't know for sure. Uh, I will show you a front and back. This was handmade by me and my father. My father spearheaded a lot of this because he is a known constructor. We made I will show you a reference of the real thing, so it's easier for you to understand. I apologize for any shoddy camera work, but this isn't easy with what I am using. One second. This is a, this is what it was supposed to be modeled off of. It probably will not focus, I apologize. And this is mine. So what was the Makoitil? The Makoitil was not a item or weapon, so be it, used for warfare, or excuse me, used for sacrifice. It was strictly a weapon of warfare. It can be described by as many things as a club sword hybrid. Its description, its English description, Makoitil, translates to handwood. Typically, these weapons were found to be three meters in length. However, based on since this these were all handmade. They varied. Sometimes the teeth, which were typically lined up with obsidian. Obsidian was usually the blade of choice, you could say, as these are supposed to be rocks. These pieces of cardboard are supposed to be the actual blade of the weapon. And craftsmanship differed. Some were made with a one-handed grip, some were made with two-handed. There have been reports, claims, that two-handed ones were typically as tall as an actual person. The last authentic Makwaitil was thought to be destroyed in a fire in 1884. However, the earliest models for this item can be found as early as the 19th century. This was a weapon distributed in Mesoamerica between many tribes, such as the Aztec or the Maya. It, it can be found in things such as the Spanish Conquest, alongside things such as the spear throwers, bows, typical more primitive weapons. This was often one of the more found when as well. This was used strictly for combat, as I mentioned. This was no item made for sacrifice or anything. It typically was lined with symbols and such, which I've tried to make. Those are my initials. <laughs> I tried to put a sun, just a streak. This was made with a long stick, tape for the handle, cardboard, which is supposed to be the obsidian, more symbols, this being a snake. <laughs> Uh, something. Another sun. And to give the blade its shine, we lined it up with glitter. The craftsmanship of these weapons were very impressive. Often, if they were made well enough, it was said that the obsidian could neither be broken nor pulled. And as said, every Manco Aitil came different as these were all handmade. What else? There is not much else to say about this, except this is quite the powerful weapon, with evidence showing that it had the power to decapitate men and horses alike. You can see this weapon in modern culture somewhat, actually, in the video game Mortal Kombat. The character named Kotal Khan, Kotal Khan, K-O-T-A-L-K-A-H-N, he, this is his main weapon of choice. Spoiler warning, that game is very violent, not PG-13, so if you do want to research, uh, do it at your own peril. However, that was one way I found this in modern culture. There isn't really a reason why I chose this. I didn't want to make something boring, such as a pot or a doll. Not to knock on people who did, but I wanted to go very special. And yes, this is I, this is Jonathan Rivera, and this is my 3D project for you, Anthony the Makwa Hitil. And I don't know how to show this for reference, um, because my camera work is not the best, but okay, here. This is a four-foot statue of Darth Vader. For size reference, this Darth Vader statue is four feet. So it lines up pretty well at about a meter. And yes, Anthony, this is what I have created for you. Can I bring this in class when we eventually go back, if we do? I would like to. Thank you. Uh, yes.